I'm in the garden of forgiveness when you when you show it at the University of the Trees in Santa Cruz. This is a place where Ken Kesey and Alan Watts and those sorts of characters hung out. Yeah. For some reason, my... It was the home of uh, Christopher Hills. Just give me a thumbs up, Peter, when you've got it. Thank you, John. That was a very meditative way of starting this fireside chat session. Um, I will share my screen with my presentation because I would like to welcome you all to this third fireside chat session. Uh, let me click on slideshow. It will pop up in a bit. Yes. 
Yes, I would like to welcome you, welcome you all to this um, third fireside chat session with the founder of Ecosystem Restoration Camps, John Dennis Liu, and uh, Mubarak Abdallah, the founder of Camp Mangroves uh, Mombasa in Kenya. And um, I'm very happy that you are all here. I will shortly introduce myself. I am Inge, I'm one of the camp coordinators at Ecosystem Restoration Camps, and I'm happy to be your host for this fireside chat session tonight. Um, just some um, house rules. Um, I would like to ask, ask you to please hold your question until after Mubarak's presentation. Uh, we would like to have a sort of interactive uh, Q&A session. So if you do have a question, please raise your hand and we will ask you to ask your question in person to Mubarak. Um, so we can make it a little bit more interactive. Uh, this session will last for one hour. So you are free to, to go, but if you want to dive deeper into certain topics, then feel free to stay for an open discussion. I will first give you some camp updates from other camps. Uh, last fireside chat, I explained that uh, Camp Embercombe, Camp Mama Adama and Camp First Lai were planning on having their uh, first camp experience in April. Unfortunately, due to COVID, this is not able to happen yet. Um, Camp Embercombe and Camp Mama Adama are deciding to planning an experience later on in the year and Camp Versailles decided to offer a different kind of experience. Um, you are now able to um, create your own personal experience uh, up to maximum four people at the same time. Uh, you will first have a Zoom call with the camp managers and you can decide on your personal program. Uh, look for more information on their camp page. Um, I think it's very exciting. And then Camp Siota Groy in um, Ireland, they're running two online courses. The first one will start this Saturday, which is the introduction to temperate food. And uh, the second one is partly online and offline, which is the introduction to uh, permaculture and it will uh, start the end of April. So you do need to be in the neighborhood of Ireland in, in order to participate. And then this uh, we weekend, Camp Hotloom offers a hands-on wor hands workshop in biochar making, and it's for locals only. So if you're near Mount Shasta, California, then feel free to go to their camp pages and sign up. And then other camp news. Um, camp Habiba will, is preparing to receive three masters uh, students, they are studying in agroecology and they will be uh, using our new monitoring and evaluation framework. Our intern Mick has um, improved our monitoring and evaluation framework and we are very excited this, that Hambiba will collect the first data. So we hope to give you more insights uh, on that later uh, in the year. And then Camp Birdhouse in, is exploring new business models for their seven sites around Los Angeles. And so they're including green spaces for health and wellness. And we are also very excited what kind of type of business models they will be working on and what we can share with, with the community. And then Camp Farm of the Future in Brazil is recovering from their um, wildfire last year. And the natu natural forest is regenerating uh, itself, luckily, um, and the agroforestry system is being replanted. Um, and they are also building um, jungle cabins um, in order to be able to host uh, campers again in September. So that is the camp news. Um, news from John. John, can you give us an update on... Um... Sure. Um, well, it's spring here and uh, it's a bit early, but, and the, the moisture is only about 30% of what it should be at this time. So California looks to be worried about uh, a really serious fire season this year. And um, I think that uh, what Hotlam is doing, teaching fire ecology and preparation for that and how, how to 
protect property and also how to make the forest as resilient as possible. And this goes together with the group that's working on cultural competency, which is um, ha led by indigenous leaders in California who are talking about their forestry practices over the last 15,000 years because this area was totally populated. And there's a growing understanding that 95 to 97% of the climax forest is now gone. And there's also a discussion happening in Los Angeles, Silicon Valley, San Francisco, and, and elsewhere that's called land-based healing for people in place. And the concept is to address the serious problems of homelessness, hunger, and unemployment, which is increasing now because of the COVID situation, and to connect that with the possibility of creating camps in farm communities for migrant farm workers and also to train people in uh, regenerative agriculture so that the industrial type chemical agriculture can be replaced. And at the same time, there's another type of camp that's being discussed, which is um, forestry camps to have homeless and, and hungry people who are interested in learning about how to reforest to <clears throat> transition toward forestry camps where they'll have jobs and, and income and be restoring the great forests of the Pacific coast. So this is all in discussions, but we have a lot of Silicon Valley leaders and a lot of uh, the media people in Hollywood discussing this. There's also a, a beautiful project happening in Oakland called Cobb on Wood, where they're building natural buildings for the uh, homeless population, unsheltered population. And they're going to have a, an event in April where they're opening a new clinic, which will provide uh, psychological and, and uh, health uh, support for those populations. So it's kind of interesting that the COVID increased this population, but it also increased the awareness of this population. And now there are some practical measures that are taking place. Um, there's also quite a lot of concentration on uh, infiltration and retention of moisture and creating water retention landscapes. So hopefully that that will uh, increase. There's one group which is called the Soil Sponge Initiative. And that one is, uh, or I think it's called the Soil Sponge Collective. And they are working with the birdhouse. Many of the birdhouse people are in that. And they're taking anybody who, who has a piece of land that they want to have, have processed, they have action days. And in these action days, they, they go to these places with truckloads of, of wood chips and straw and manure, and they process the soils until they're really thick with organic material. And then they seed it with, um, with um, cover crops. And then they, they do that two or three times until they put in the final uh, things. And it really works well. It's fast. It's a rapid thing. There's also some developments with um, farming, the land-based healing for People in place is actually in the process of identifying land to purchase. And there's a number of places and a number of groups that are planning to buy property 
which they will then transition into uh, regenerative agriculture with those kind of camps. So that's what's what we've been working on. And there's a lot of wildlife asking for help too. Thanks. Very interesting developments. Thank, thank you, John, for sharing. Okay, I'm going back to our presentation because I'm going to announce, announce the guest of tonight. Um, yes. Which is Mubarak. I'm very happy, uh, Mubarak, to have you here. Mubarak is only in his beginning 30s and has achieved already so much. Um, he is restoring the Tudor Creek Forest, uh, which was 1,641 hectares back in the days, but because of uh, urbanization, um, pollution, harvesting, and climate change, only 250 hectares is left. And their aim is to plant 14,260,000 mangrove trees, an amazing goal. Um, and Mubarak is working from the bottom up, working closely together with uh, the communities, uh, learning them about alternative businesses, um, support monitoring uh, activities, and also very important, providing training to the youth to make them rangers of the recovered forest. So thank you, Mubarak. And his ambition is reaching even further, but Mubarak will tell you uh, in his own presentation. I'm very excited to have you here, Mubarak, and I would love to um, give you uh, the word. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, thank you uh, so much for this opportunity. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, do my presentation and um, uh, we will start with the first uh, uh, that um, I hustle for my daily bread and um, thereafter I dedicated my time uh, and effort from the remaining part of my day towards mangrove uh, uh, conservation that um, uh, mo uh, mostly I just hustle in the village but um, I have uh, reserved that, um, lots of time uh, for the mangrove uh, restoration and uh, with my uh, colleagues uh, within the village and uh, some others uh, uh, who are coming from outside the country and uh, some are uh, from outside the village, uh, like other regions within uh, within Kenya. And um, on my uh, on a daily basis, if um, uh, there is no planting activity, I walk around uh, the mangrove uh, forest, observing and identifying areas uh, that uh, uh, may need attention. Um, this is monitoring as well as studying the ecosystem to understand uh, the forest better. Uh, we have been uh, doing, um, uh, it's like a going patrol of, uh, uh, within the mango forest and to look for those trees we have planted, um, the progress and um, uh, through the um, uh, walking along the uh, shoreline and uh, within uh, the plantation, we can come up uh, uh, with the idea where to do the uh, restoration uh, and where to do the replacement or where we are supposed to increase our, uh, our effort towards uh, the conservation. Next. Next. Yeah, I think he wants you to, or Peter, I think he wants you to change the slide. Ready? Yeah, yes. thank you. Um, uh, for the community involvement, um, 
as you can see, um, we are holding a banner and uh, during that time we were supported by the German-based organization called uh, Climbing Partners. Now we interact with the community on a daily basis and most importantly, we involve them in planting activities. And um, through the planting activities, we are creating jo uh, temporary jobs uh, for the locals within the community who are living adjacent to the mango forest uh, within uh, Tudor Creek area. And um, uh, we are also um, uh, uh, working with, uh, like every day we are, um, are receiving new uh, uh, new people who um, who they don't have uh, knowledge uh, and um, knowledge of uh, the mangrove. Uh, they they don't have an idea for the mango forest. So we are uh, daily are receiving a new people to the mango forest, and uh, we are teaching them, and we also involve them for the entire activities the restoration. Uh, participation participants are mostly women. Um, we prioritize single mother, uh, youths, uh, young mothers, and widows uh, for the earning uh, for, for, for the earning a living through the uh, planting activity. As I said before that uh, when we involve the, um, the locals, uh, uh, those um, including uh, young mother, uh, single mothers, widows, uh, when we have funding and um, we pay them some small amount uh, so that uh, when they go back to their homes, they can have something to put on the table and uh, also to support uh, them uh, for their other um, uh, uh, living uh, cost uh, in the houses. Um, the fishermen and the other locals who are frequently uh, on the ocean, like those that catch crabs, are immediately um, target audience whether, whenever we create awareness on the importance of mangroves. Um, like um, at our project site, we we, we have a um, station for the local fishermen. So uh, mostly we uh, do um, a sensitization for the fishermen, and uh, because um, uh, there, there was a t there was a time uh, the, the local fishermen they were just um, going to the sea and. Uh, um, catching uh, turtles and uh, slaughter it uh, for uh, to get the meat and the oil, uh, the, the, the turtle oil, uh, so that uh, they can sell it to the community. Uh, it's um, it, it's um, uh, uh, they, they believe that um, uh, the turtle oil is um, um, more useful for those people who are having some pains. Uh, inside the ears, so you, you can just uh, take some, a few drops inside the ear, then you get a relief. So they, when they get turtles uh, from the ocean, they just catch it and slaughter. Then they, uh, they, they, they took the um, turtle meat and put it on the sun, uh, on on a, on a um, wire mesh. And uh, so that uh, the turtle, it can uh, drain the oil and uh, they take it uh, to the village uh, for um, uh, income, uh, they, they sell it. And also they sell the meat to the local villagers. So we have um, seen as a, a threat to, to the uh, turtles and uh, we have um, agreed as uh, the community members of Kampumbasa Mango Forest Rubrain Youth Group um, to sensitize them not to catch the turtles and uh, 
and um, they can join uh, the the, uh, uh, the the mangrove restoration and earn something for a living. And uh, the turtle, it can be also um, a good starting point for the ecotourism activities. And, and um, they have agreed to uh, not to catch again the turtle from the ocean. And um, we, are, we, we are happy f uh, for that. Um, yeah, next, Peter. Um, we have been also working with uh, school students from uh, different schools within the, the village. As you can see from the left uh, side, we were having some students from another school within the village, uh, 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 which is called the Kadongo Academy. Uh, we believe that uh, educating children is the best way to ensure environmental conservation uh, will reach uh, uh, the future generation. Because uh, like, if we try to concentrate on the adults, then it, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the adults, it's a bit challenge to convince an adult to uh, leave the habitant that uh, is, uh, uh, they, they, they are used to, 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 uh, to do the, the activity. But uh, when you nurture a kid, then the, the, the kid uh, will listen and uh, we will copy from what you are doing and uh, then they will apply it and uh, practice it until uh, their future. So that um, we have decided to involve the school students as a way of um, making sure that uh, the, 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 the skills that uh, we are um, uh, sharing with the local communities, we are also sharing with the the students so that uh, they will be our future ambassador. Uh, students as well as children in the local community, they are normally invited in our planting activity. We educate them on uh, mangrove conservation and um, environmental conservation, like. Um, from uh, the right hand side, you can see another school from um, Bombolulu within Kisauni. Uh, they it came for um, a mangrove. Uh, it, it, it was a um, um, uh, World Mangrove Day, and uh, they came to participate for. We, we invited them to come to participate for a mangrove planting, so that. Uh, when they grow old, uh, they can still use the knowledge to apply to the other areas and um, to continue with the um, uh, reforestation activity and uh, conserving our planet uh, instead of uh, leaving them and not uh, uh, educating them, then they will go to the forest and destroy all the forest. So we saw that uh, when we involve the school students, um, we are on the right way of uh, uh, conserving our planet uh, uh, for, for the people and uh, for the nature. Next. Sorry, my, it, I'm entering, but yay, I think we have it, yeah. Yeah. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, there is some uh, kids, uh, holding up uh, some mangrove ceilings with eye. Uh, these are 
the kids who are living uh, adjacent to the mango forest and some of their um, uh, parents are members of uh, um, members of the brain youth group Kampombasa mango forest uh, we, we intend to cooperate by um, by the beach like football uh, using uh, songs uh, role play among other fun activities like creating art that resemble marine creatures uh, decoration to make marine education and co uh, con uh, conservation fun and memorable um, to the children um, at, the, at the moment uh, we have not yet um, initiated the uh, the program but uh, we have a plan of um, setting up uh, the activity of uh, uh, creating some ads so that uh, the uh, uh, I believe that uh, children they love arts when they saw some cartoons they really enjoy it uh, and when uh, we we continue uh, doing the conservation works through this method we can motivate them and um, we can bring them together uh, through the uh, uh, creating arts uh, that resemble some uh, marine creatures like fish uh, swimming in the ocean uh, like crabs walking um, in the mud and uh, kids uh, they will be motivated and uh, they will put that in, in, in their minds uh, even the um, uh, fo football activities uh, we we, we, we are planning to have some uh, matches uh, with the uh, students and um, this it will be done um, like every month uh, we do it uh, once with the kids and uh, even the, 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 the planting with kids uh, to do it uh, once in a month. Every month we will make sure we have an activity for the, the children from the village uh, to do the planting and also having some fun like playing football, singing the cultural songs so that we can motivate them. Next. Next. Yes, one moment. I. I'm pressing next, but I think yeah. again it will take some time. I'm not sure why it doesn't work. Um, all right. It's unbelievable. Inge, what usually works is that you, if you click on the slideshow and then use it, it might work. Zoom is a, kind of, uh, a weird thing. Ah, I found it. Yeah. Sorry, nice. everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, in our activity, we are working with um, uh, different people, different organization, and um, we are involving government. Uh, we are involving government um, to work with us to foster brotherhood between the international uh, community and the local community. Like uh, from uh, on the left hand, uh, you can see um, one of our international uh, uh, camper, uh, uh, Martin Jacobsen from Denmark. And, showing the local community on how to use the uh, modern machine, uh, taking some pictures from the, uh, the mangroves. Uh, and um, we, we have been working uh, closely with Kenya Forest Service as the government, uh, providing us with trainings 
and uh, even the Kenya Police Service uh, visiting the site with a genuine interest in mangrove conservation. Uh, like um, at the moment, uh, um, I came to realize that uh, the Kenya Forest Service, uh, when you report uh, a case of uh, um, a case of um, uh, people going uh, down to the mangrove forest, cutting uh, cutting down uh, cutting down of the mangrove trees, then they took a lot of time, and sometimes they have a uh, and, and uh, they don't have uh, enough rangers. Uh, to go all over the uh, uh, the entire Mombasa uh, county to look for the mango uh, forest. So I decided to um, uh, uh, bring in the Kenya Police Service through the area police boss and um, was uh, really um, uh, impressed by what uh, we have been doing on the ground. and. Um, he has managed to send us uh, some policemen and uh, arrest uh, several people and take them to the station and arrange them to court. So we have uh, a, a good networking with the government agencies and um, uh, involving the government gives us uh, uh, the assure, assurance that uh, our activity are well appreciated a local. Next. Yeah, uh, the importance of uh, my work and uh, local impact. Uh, my main focus is to restore Tudor Creek to its initial state. Uh, so to curb environmental degradation, um, this is important as the outcome will not only benefit my community, but also the whole world in carbon sequestration. Um, as um, we know, uh, there is a lot of pollution um, inside Kenya and outside. So as long as uh, we are planting the mangroves, the mangroves will um, uh, offset the uh, 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 carbon from the atmosphere. And um, that's the one way of um, our um, a program benefiting uh, the entire world. Um, the mangrove cover has increased uh, to more than seven uh, 700,000 mango trees over the time. As uh, we continue to plant trees towards the restoration of 1,426 hectares of degraded mangroves out of uh, 20, uh, out of 1,641 hectares, um, we have uh, um, planted the 700,000 mango seedlings. Uh, since 2011 up to date uh, with a support from various donors, uh, including ecosystem restoration camps, uh, Gone West Global, um, uh, Idea Wide from California, uh, the pollination project uh, from California. Uh, we have also been receiving support from the UNDP through their small grants program and um, the Trillion Tree campaign. We have some individuals uh, inside from Kenya and others are from UNEP and some are from outside uh, Africa, mostly uh, from US individual members. They have been supporting um, a brain youth group, uh, uh, Camp Mombasa Mango Forest to plant at the 700,000 mangrove ceilings. And um, uh, this year, we have planted uh, 120 uh, mangrove ceilings with, with support from one of, the, one of our current donor who is currently on the ground. Uh, the guy we have seen 
uh, we have seen uh, in the previous video uh, teaching the local community he supported us to plant uh, uh, 100,000 uh, mangrove seedlings uh, he's called Jacob uh, he's called uh, Martin Jacobsen from Denmark and I've uh, been uh, traveling back to Denmark end of this uh, uh, this month of April uh, we have noticed we, we, we have noticed the gradual increase in the catch by the fishermen. This is an opportunity for them to earn more and improving the condition of their livelihoods. Uh, the local impact, other than the ecological benefits, can hardly extend to meet or support projects in the local community that uh, do not um, relate uh, to mangrove planting. We hope that Donna may consider supporting program on marine education and conserving and co uh, conservation for, for children. Uh, we have been um, receiving some support um, and uh, it has uh, really made a, a, a big impact to the community because we have uh, been working with more than 500 uh, people within the community through those uh, grants we have been receiving from the fund uh, from the uh, our donors and um, uh, we, we are still working how to bring uh, to br uh, to bring uh, more um, uh, partners on the ground, including um, uh, in, uh, including volunteers, uh, experts uh, with passion for the mangrove ecosystem restoration, and uh, uh, funders uh, to support uh, the restoration work of the. 14, uh, 1,426 hectares of degraded mangroves. Yeah. Next. Um, yeah, here you can see an image uh, when I was uh, doing some replacement with my colleagues, but the camera, uh, <laughs> it was uh, uh, favorable. You, it, it just focused on me. And uh, that's a picture of me uh, when I was doing the mangrove replacement. Um, I attended a workshop on environmental conservation in 2010 that seated on uh, environmental degradation. I look at my uh, community to find out if there were activity aimed at restoration. There were a few. Um, this uh, drove me towards the initiative to start with the restoration of Chuda Creek, uh, mango forest restoration. In, uh, in, in the 20, uh, 2010, I was uh, invited by one of my colleagues to attend a workshop. Uh, it was, um, it, it was, um, it, it was a community sensitization workshop. And um, after I attended the workshop, then I, 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 I was so in, uh, in inspired uh, with uh, the, uh, the 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 program and uh, the impact of the program to the community. So um, I decided to chip in and. Um, um, initiate a new program that I will do uh, much better than the, uh, the, the, the previous uh, that uh, inspired me to chip in. And I went to the village and starting chatting with, uh, chatting one, one in one by, one, uh, by uh, some of my fellow youths. And uh, then we team up. Uh, to set up the Brain Youth Group 
and uh, we started engaging Kenya Forest Service. Later, we bring on board Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. Um, uh, later, we proceed to Coast Development Authority, uh, Ministry of Fisheries, which is now uh, being called uh, a, a State Department of Fisheries. And later, I proceed to the National Environmental Management Authority, NEMA, and uh, Kenya Wildlife Service. And then I expanded uh, the networking to non-governmental organization. Then I uh, bring on board um, a community, uh, Kanko, uh, community Action for Nature Conservation, Kanko, uh, among other organizations. And uh, they help us um, on technical uh, uh, technical issues uh, towards the restoration and um, some trainings, uh, uh, so that uh, we can uh, the, we can um, uh, we, 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 uh, so that we can um, we can uh, uh, we, we can all uh, be equal. Uh, to know the importance of the mangroves. Um, yeah, um, I'm an environmental conservation uh, at heart, and I'm working to ensure that uh, I have contributed to the forest conservation and the restoration worldwide to curb environmental uh, degradation by planting billion trees. Um, on this point, I have, uh, beside the Brain Youth Group, uh, which is currently working on Tudor Creek, um, uh, which is currently working on Tudor Creek mangrove um, uh, forest restoration, I have another organization which is called uh, Forest Restoration Agents, and uh, we are aiming to plant 3.5 billion trees um, uh, globally, but um, in Kenya, we decided uh, to give it uh, more, and um, we decided to um, start with one billion trees. And uh, at the moment, I'm in progress of um, getting prepared to uh, get to the ground and to start the uh, restoration of, uh, 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 to start my journey of uh, 3.5 billion trees. And uh, in forest restoration agents, um, we are um, a global uh, network. We have members from different parts of the world. And um, um, uh, we have some members in Kenya uh, who are uh, uh, some of the members of the forest restoration agents, uh, the heads of Kenyan government agencies like um, uh, three regional coordinator for Kenya Water Tower Agents, uh, the East, uh, North Rift Valley, Eastern Region and Coast Region. We have the regional coordinators, uh, three ladies, and I have uh, one guy from uh, Kenya Wildlife Service, the head of mangroves along Kenyan coast, he's called Dr. Mohammed. And um, I also have some other staff from Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research from the Department of Social Economy, uh, who are also part of Forest Restoration Agents. And uh, we have one member, uh, one staff from Coast Development uh, Authority. It's also a government institution, uh, the head of uh, agriculture in Coast Development Authority. She's called Lauren Kithi. Uh, she is also part of Forest Restoration Agents. So um, we, we have, um, we have um, some interested funders, uh, including some uh, individual from uh, United Nations environmental programs, uh, some individuals uh, from UNEP who has um, been supporting the Brain Youth Group. They have uh, promised to help uh, uh, forest restoration agents to be part of the United uh, Nations Environmental Program, and also to link us with other funders who are working close with um, United Nations Environmental Programs. 
and uh, there is some other um, organization across uh, Europe and US uh, that uh, they have shown interest on the billion trees and uh, forest restoration agents. And um, everyone is happy with my idea of forest restoration agents, the farm, and I welcome you all to join me towards fighting climate change through planting the billion trees. Yeah, uh, when you join the restoration, you can have a lot of funny, uh, like having jokes, uh, joking to each other. Uh, like on the left hand, you can see and uh, two people they are like joking the one is doing potting and the other lady is just trying to hit the guy with uh, the bag of the polity bags so in kenya we say kazi uh, we say we we, we 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 in kenya we say kazi haitaki asira meaning uh, um when you go to the uh, when you're working you are not to uh you, 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 you are not supposed to be a hunger person you are you have to be uh someone polite humble so that you we, you, you can make the work easier and uh even others they will have memories and uh interest to join back the activities not um uh not even at, uh, on the right hand side you can see one of our member uh she got struck in the mud during the planting uh this is uh the the, the second uh picture it is um it was um during the World Wetlands Day, we celebrated uh, planting 7,000 mangroves, um, uh, 7,000 7, mangrove uh, ceilings with support from a uh, trillion tree campaign. Not even when you got stuck in the mud, um, team work as applied in, re, uh, in uh, resecuring her. Uh, uh, we are lucky to have each other. No one uh, uh, gets left behind. Uh, the lady who, who uh, gets stuck in the mud, uh, she is called uh, Messi Mugambi. Uh, Messi Mugambi, uh, when you come to Kenya, you will have a chance to meet with her uh, face to face. And uh, we are just working as a team. And uh, when we see some uh one of us are in trouble then we have to uh, help uh, our colleague and make sure that uh, we are all safe and uh, no one has uh, left behind yeah next yeah uh you can see some some of our, um, our ladies, uh, the single mother, the single ma mother uh, doing the uh, potting, and uh, they are just having uh, it's uh, the and, uh, and uh, uh, when you look uh, at the picture, you can see that um, the the. Uh, the, the women, uh, uh, when they are at the project site, they are just um, enjoying the work, um, playing in the mud, and uh, you can uh, see some some of our members climbing at the mangroves trees, doing the seed collection. These are the uh, fun activities uh, uh, you, you will go through when you come and uh, join the mangrove restoration along Shuda Creek. 
um, yeah. and uh, you can see our previous nursery in uh, for the 2020 we um, uh, initiated um, uh, nearly 20 28,000 um, mangrove seedlings in, uh, last year. And uh, you can see uh, my image. I was uh, doing potting the mangrove. Yeah, that's what I can say for the work that I'm doing for the Chuda uh, Creek Mangrove Forest Restoration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mubarak. Uh, it was an incredible presentation. I really enjoyed to, to really get to know your story a little bit better. Um, I, I see we, run, we ran a little bit over time, but um, that, I, I, that doesn't bother me because I really enjoyed it. It, it really gave a good picture of um, what you are doing and what it looks like. Um, I'm just wondering, are there any questions? If you have a questions, please please raise your hand uh, to ask to Mubarak or John. If if you, uh, I, I see Aaron. I will ask you to unmute first. Aaron. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yeah. Um, so Mubarak, I was. I have a couple of questions. Um, sure. One. Is did you find an alternative for the little the plastic bottles that you were using to plant the propagules? I know you were uh, looking okay. for one. Okay, um, for the for the process of the propagules, we do it uh, in two ways. The first one, we just go to the mangrove uh, forest and collect the mangrove seedlings. Then we do sorting of the matured, and uh, then we decide if we, 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 we have planned for the mangrove nursery, then we proceed to the mangrove nursery. And if we have decided to do the direct planting, then we do direct planting. And uh, for the mangrove uh, nursery studies, we are just it. Uh, we are just doing it as, as a way of uh, reserving seeds, because uh, there is a time uh, when uh, the season of uh, mango seedling uh, run out, and uh, we remain with only one uh, one species, uh, the syrup, and uh, that's why we do the the mangrove nursery uh, for two reasons. The first one to reserve the seeds when the seed season run out. And the second reason is just to, uh, 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 we do it as a way of income. Uh, when we establish the mangrove nursery, then we sell it and uh, the, uh, uh, our community members, they have some, uh, something to look for their families. But I remember that you were looking for um, an alternative to using the plastic bottles. And I was wondering, did you find something like the paper cups or um, something that was a little more, more biodegradable so that you could plant them a little more easily or are the bottles the best you can do? Uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, at the moment, um, we have uh, a nursery of about uh, uh, 18,000 mangrove ceilings and uh, the community, they are just um, uh, keep on raising the nursery. And uh, we are just going to the, to the dumping site, collecting the used um, uh, milk sachets and the uh, water, uh, used water bottles and the um, uh, salt sachets. Uh, we take it to the project site, then we prepare it for potting, and uh, we keep on uh, raising the nurseries. Okay, so you, you are still using the plastic uh, bottles for at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Erin, you are muted, if you had another question. <laughs> Okay. 
Um, I had another question was, there um, was a conference last week, the um, Economist uh, Summit, Ocean Summit, World Ocean Summit, and there was a speaker there called James Cairo. He's um, involved with the Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute. And I was wondering if you knew him because he was talking about the, um, the blue economy and um, he was on a board with a whole bunch of people who are looking at um, trying to facilitate companies to invest in um, blue initiatives. Blue initiatives, of course, are those related to the ocean, right? Um, and mangrove plays into that. So um, there were people in there that I'm sure he could put you in touch with who are part of the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, and other, other um, people who might be able to help you to get some of the funding that is out there um, for these, these blue carbon initiatives, uh, yes. because you just have to be able to prove that you can, um, that you're actually doing a project and you've got the work, but I'm sure that that would be relatively simple. And I don't know, John, if you know somebody um, within that group who, um, who's working either at the IUCN or, or with it, but it, it seems to be a really global push right now to, to facilitate funding. Mubarak, do you, do you know uh, uh, the gentleman? Sorry? Do you know this gentleman? I... The Cairo? You mean the Cairo? James Cairo? Yeah, I know him, but uh, one thing I would um, uh, like to put it uh, clear that um, uh, uh, Dr. James Cairo is a, he was a very uh, good friend of mine, but uh, th there was a time uh, he was uh, trying to uh, play with my mind and um, I later came to uh, refuse to work with him uh, because there, there was a time he sent his guys and uh, they were asking me uh, for my email password. And uh, since I refused to, um, uh, to share the, the password, uh, my password, then they also refused to, when I try to call them, then they say, oh, we, Mubarak, we have a lot of works. We have a lot of works and I, and, and even some staff from the Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute, they have warned me several times not to, uh, not to fully involve Dr. Cairo. Dr. Cairo is a well-educated person. Uh, when you go to the internet, you can see a uh, great job that are um, interacting with uh, a different uh, organization. But uh, when you try to um, uh, work with him, you have to listen to him, not, uh, you, you, you are, he will not uh, allow you to, uh, to talk anything. He will just uh, want to rule you. And um, uh, there was a time I told him, if you uh, try to interrupt with my work, then I will take you to the uh, national media. Uh, I will call all the uh, national uh, media station, then I will uh, make sure I have destroyed your face, uh, national or global, then he refused. Yeah, Brother John. John. I think one thing that might be helpful is for um, the ecosystem restoration camps movement to kind of advocate for Mubarak and and the and the people in, in in Kenya, because it's going to be harder, probably for him, to ask, but it might be easier for others to ask for him. This is something that I I noticed. So, if there are people on this call, for instance, who would like to 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 join with him to advocate in their countries or with international agencies. It probably has a bit more impact. And then 
also, I think we need to carefully monitor what's going on there. So that's a great thing for the monitoring and assessment mechanisms that are being prepared. And then we can see what's, what's taking place. And there is a lot of pettiness in conservation and it's unfortunate. It, it shouldn't happen at all, but there it is. So um, very important to come together in the, in the way that he's talking about with joy and laughter and, and collaboration. And there are things which can happen in other countries to help them that they can't do for themselves because the level that, that the, many of the people are living at there is not at the same level as in Europe or, or the United States. Thank you, John. And, and maybe to go back to um, the joy and the collaboration that you um, do with, with your community. Um, I read in the chat that people are very interested in how you manage to get so much interest in your community to, to join you in this, uh, in this restoration. Uh, <laughs> sure, sure. Thank you. And uh, I have seen that I have uh, left the question hanging uh, on the chat, but uh, the truth, uh, the truth is um, at the community, at the beginning, they were not um, um, uh, supporting my idea. Uh, in fact, some of the community, they were just saying, why Mubarak, you have decided to go to the mangrove in, in, uh, because we know the mangroves uh, grow naturally in the ocean and then you have uh, decided to come up with an activity of restoring the mangrove why not uh, planting some cassavas or some other fruit trees outside uh, but uh, they were just talking and i wasn't uh, listening to their thoughts i just keep on focusing for my uh, vision. Then later we had a project from uh, uh, the World Bank, the World Bank funded project uh, through Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. Then uh, some staff from the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute, uh, they came to the village and asked the village elders uh, to mobilize the entire village so that when they bring the money, uh, the, uh, the a job for protecting the mangrove, it will not be for the members of Brain Youth Group, but it will be the job for the entire community to protect the mangroves. And uh, they mentioned in front of the community that uh, we have um, funded a Brain Youth Group with a worth of uh, 5,000 US dollar and 100 people, they will have job through this project. Then, after the meeting, uh, some uh, the same same people uh, those who are, uh, uh, um, were against my vision, they came back to me and say, "Oh, Mubarak, we can see now uh, you are now doing some great job, and uh, we have hear from the meeting from the government officials that uh, you will have an opportunity for 100 people to work for uh, one week, and then." Uh, please count on uh, uh, involve us uh, in the list to plant the mango. And um, they have seen that uh, it is not the way that uh, they were thinking, and uh, it's now uh, a program that uh, they will get knowledge and, and they will also get uh, a, a small amount of money to help their um, uh, families. And uh, it, it's also uh, the, the project is also acting like um, a bridge that uh, links the local community with the international community. Like uh, previous, we had some campers from ecosystem restoration camps. Uh, the lady who is, uh, uh, who is uh, working with Aga Khan, Kenya, uh, she came to the project uh, site uh, with her, um, um, her kids. And then some uh, a few locals, 
they came to the project side saying, what, what is going on uh, uh, from the project side? Uh, we can see some white people coming to the project. And then during that day, uh, uh, we had like eight people, they came to join us and plant the mangroves. And then uh, the lady, she's called uh, na, na, Natasha. Uh, she asked me, Mubarak, uh, are you also working with uh, uh, these guys? Uh, then I told her, no, no. Uh, they have just seen you and uh, they have come uh, just to a way of making friendship. And uh, uh, they can't uh, come direct and start talking with you. Uh, so they have seen the planting of mango, it will be a um, bridge of connection uh, for them and you. So it's now like we, um, we have uh, built the center for interaction between the locals and international. Even Martin, uh, the current uh, Danish guy who supported us to plant over 100 uh, trees, he, he he now has a lot of friends uh, from the village. Yeah, that's so, great. So the people, uh, it's like they, they are being motivated to see the international community coming uh, to the project. So they wish to have the opportunity to interact too. That's great. So you're ensuring livelihoods for, for people who are planting the trees with you and they're are also a feeling of excitement and opportunity. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, we, we, we have uh, other two activities uh, for the income generating, uh, for income generating activity. Um, we have uh, two marine fish ponds. Uh, we are currently working slowly on uh, renovation. And uh, we have um, uh, six beehives at the mango forest as a way of income and also as a way of protecting the mangroves. When someone goes inside the mangrove uh, forest, then it will be just out um, by the bees. So. <laughs> Great protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you still see people harvesting uh, mangrove trees? Not yet, since I started uh, involving the police then, you know, uh, the Kenyan police, they are not like the international police. Uh, like uh, the, the day I, I bring the area police boss, there was a guy who um, took out uh, his uh, panga machete. He wanted to cut the area police boss. Then he was beaten like um, uh, an animal. Then Martin was like, oh, Mubarak, this is not a, a humanity. Why the police are beating the people? <laughs> this way. So uh, they believe that when they come to the mango forest and cutting down the trees, then they will be arrested. And uh, the Kenyan police are very uh, uh, harsh when they uh, get you with uh, any mistake, then you will I regret <laughs> yeah. why you have done it. Yeah. So people, uh, they are like, they have started uh, fearing. That's true. To, yeah. Maybe at night they went uh, uh, in the middle of the forest and cutting the mangroves. I have not um, yet um, seen such activity, but uh, maybe. Yeah. But. Uh, the current activity of cutting down uh, frequently, uh, it has went down the activities. Yeah, you are a great networker, Mubarak, that you were able to involve so many uh, important um, people from your community. And yeah, it's just, it's a very impressive story. Uh, John, you have another question. Yes. Well, I just wanted to say <laughs> we haven't talked about tsunami uh, yet, and I think it's really important to realize <clears throat> that the that the mangroves have this really important function, which is to protect the coastal regions. There there are several aspects to this. One is that 
there's an accumulation of organic material below the, the mangroves, which actually raises the coastal soils. So if, if that isn't there, the coastal region is sinking at the same time that the ocean is rising. This is very, very, very dangerous. And it's, it's a life and death situation for the people there. So education will help them to understand why they shouldn't cut down these mangroves and why it's really important since they have so, so little mangroves remaining that they get back the, the massive mangroves that they had in the past. <clears throat> and then the other thing is the value of the mangroves needs to be discussed because you know, people are asking for tiny, tiny amounts of money in Kenya in relationship to what, what's happening in the rest of the world in terms of materialism. But the value of those mangroves is vastly higher than anything that people have ever made. So this, the eco, economic evaluation is false. And we need to, and I, I think for those people in Kenya to advocate about the value of the mangroves is not going to be as powerful as the people in the developed world saying, hey, stop this. All of the materialism is not worth as much as these huge mangrove forests. And we have to stop giving pennies to these people and give them, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars, millions of dollars potentially to, to help them raise their standard of living so that they're not, con they're not forced to take things out that destroy the ecology. And that is helping not only them, but everybody. And I think another thing that we need to co concentrate on is that it's not simply carbon that, that is, is, is being discussed. Um, it's, it's really the whole ecological functioning, the, the rise of the, of the coastal regions is critical now um, for the, the whole coastal regions to protect against the erosion of the continent. You know, so, you know, what's that going to do? There are already these projections about how much of the earth is gonna be, you know, all the people living in coastal regions and cities will be overwhelmed, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that depends on our understanding, because if you're, if you're subsiding the landscape at the same time that the ocean is rising, of course that's going to happen. But if you understand that over evolutionary time, there's an there's a increase by natural increase. And if we can calculate the natural increase in the coastal regions and connect that to the, to the inevitable sea, sea level rise, and balance that, we're going to save all that, all that infrastructure and all those people. What's the value of that? You know, so when, when you start to consider these things from the, the, the ecological perspective and from the economic perspective, you can see that there are different ways to, to approach this. And the values now are wrong. The, the idea that the commodities and the extracted materials are more valuable than the ecological function is just false. And we need to forcefully say this at this time because it's going to determine over the next 10 years and 20 years, it's going to determine the future for human civilization. So this is, I think, for, you know, when having studied this now for some time, I, you know, I'm frustrated that these very important points are not focused on. And we're, we're, we're seeing this more in a kind of earlier iteration where we're just thinking, oh, it's about uh, other, other things. It's not, it's about two things primarily. One is these ecological understandings and the value of it. And the second is justice. You know, this is connected to, to justice for all the people. 
if people have lost access to their lands, if people have lost uh, their, their basic human rights, then you know, who's going to stand up and advocate for those people? So those people now are, are in, in a sense, they're, they're impacted by his historical things. So their position is, is not one of power. It's one of, 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 of an, an unequal relationship. And what we have to do is we have to say, no, this is not right. They're equal. Everyone is equal. You don't need to buy your human rights. You need to, and, and we need to advocate for their human rights. And I, I think we also need to, to, to say, hey, let's educate. Let's not, let's not just, you know, victimize the, the, the people who, who are perhaps afraid for their own safety and are trying to gather firewood or make a little bit of money or something, they shouldn't be beaten by police either. You know, they, the, the whole thing, you know, and they should not be attacking police, but you know, the whole, the whole concept of this has to be put into a, a holistic context or you can't solve it. It's not just planting mangroves that needs to happen here. It's building a strong community that is knowledgeable and capable to, to, to advocate, but they need other advocates as well. Thank you. Thank you, John. Very interesting point. I think we do need loads of more education about this uh, on different levels. Um, I was thinking, Kaf, maybe we can include it into our tree symposium to do uh, an extra special part on mangrove forest. Um, but Mubarak, maybe you can share something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have something. I have something to add. Uh, regarding the issue that uh, it has been raised by our brother uh, John, uh, um, regarding the tsunami and um, the issue of the uh, uh, community being beaten by the police, uh, through my uh, current work and uh, the um, uh, new assign uh, the, the new uh, title uh, under Wetlands International that I was um, being nominated as a youth ambassador for Wetlands International in East Africa region. I want to use this opportunity um, to make sure that I have um, uh, raised awareness within my region. Um, on the importance of uh, mangroves and um, also try to bring all the security agencies uh, to uh, bring them on the ground so that uh, they can um, build friendship with the locals and not staying like uh, enemies. Uh, uh, like the guy who was uh, beaten by the police, um, uh, he, was, uh, um, he was carrying some poles from the mangrove forest, and I told him to leave the poles. Then he refused to um, uh, to leave the poles. He said, um, and "I'm tired of. Um, uh, I have used a lot of my time getting to the forest, cutting these uh, trees. I want to sell it and uh, and have some money to cater for my living." then I won't leave these poles. Then uh, the area police boss, um, he shouted uh, to the guy that, uh, what? What are you saying? Then I told the area police boss, uh, please wait, I'm still talking with him. Then the area police boss, he, um, he, he calmed down. Um, but uh, the guy later, he started shouting uh, uh, towards me. Then the area, the area police boss, uh, then he refused and got anger and uh, ordered the other uh, junior police to handcuff him. Then he was resisting to be handcuffed and uh, he took out the panga, uh, one to cut the police. Then he was like, you don't know uh, who, are you, who, are, who are you playing with. Then the area police boss, they um, uh, 
took the plastic uh, uh, sticks and starting uh, beating him until uh, uh, he, he was um, uh, uncuffed, then uh, taken to the police. But uh, the others, uh, in the same same day, uh, we arrested some other three, and um, they were ordered by the police to take down the poles, and they do so. And uh, they were ordered to take out their pangas and drop it down, and they do so. Then they were told that by the police, go to the shed and uh, wait, wait, wait us with other police. They were not beaten, but those, for those, uh, they were trying to use force to show um, uh, using force to the police. Then the police got anger and started reacting. But uh, we are not um, using any force to um, uh, use the police to be the community. For those uh, who are being arrested, uh, when they surrendered themselves to police, then they are taken to police peaceful. Good. Aaron, you had a question? You, you are muted. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, I was wondering, Mubarak, do you know of um, a red algae called Asparagopsis taxiformis? Have you ever heard of that? It's, mm, it, it grows not. on the mangroves, on the, tr on the roots, and it actually can be a really good revenue source because what it does, it's, it's the algae that you can yeah. add to cow feed, to cattle, to reduce yes. their methane. Um, if you add 2% of the dry weight, it reduces 98% of the methane from, um, uh, from ruminants. So cows, sheep, goats. And so it actually is something that may be really up and coming and very valuable on so many levels because it's, it takes the carbon out, it reduces methane, it can give you an income stream, so many, so many different um, angles to it. Uh, I, I'll send you some research on it. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, sure, I will really appreciate it and I will start working on it with my colleagues. Well, just see if it will work for you because if it does, there's, you know, there's honey and then there are other things that you can incorporate as well. And I, I think that that could be really interesting. Sure, sure, sure. Great idea, Erin. Um, Carrie, you also raised your hand, sorry. <laughs> Jambo Sanu Mbarak. Thank you, brother, for sharing. Yeah, I have, um, my name is Carrie, and I'm calling into the Zoom from Portland, Oregon, in USA. Yes. I have visited Mombasa two years ago, and I was yeah. there with the Aga Khan Foundation taking a course. And I had the chance to meet uh, several local youth organizations, civil society organizations. I've just read your uh, the website for Brain, which I love the name, Brain Youth Project. Brain, Brain Youth Group. Brain Youth Group. Thank you. Yeah. I, I was just really impressed by your inspiration. And having seen some of the extreme challenges that your age group, 18 to 35, is facing in the Mombasa region. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it was, it's a real situation for so many young people. And I'm wondering, what gave you the inspiration, the seed, back in 2011, when there was no international partners, there, there wasn't a project already happening. What, what gave you that seed of inspiration that you could make a difference in the world and that you could restore this ecosystem? How, how did that happen for you? And then have you also, my second question is, how do you relate your story to your age peers and inspire them? What, what, where is the, the meaning 
for youth and the, the effort to be a earth hero? Beautiful question, Carrie. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Um, and uh, the guy who uh, was doing the, who was uh, carrying out the community sensitization in 2011, is an uh, uh, is a human rights activist. Uh, he's called uh, Lucas Fondo, and um, um, uh, uh, before we we start uh, the uh, Tudor Creek Mango Forest rest Restoration, there were no activities uh, being carried up along the Tudor Creek, and uh, we were the first. Um, uh, community groups and uh, later we started seeing some other small groups coming up from other sides of the creek and uh, but um, we, we, we still uh, uh, make it uh, at the restoration and um, since I started um, uh, doing the restoration there, there was a, a lot of um, um uh, and uh, like uh government agencies coming uh to the project site and um uh, among other um, um ngos uh like unep uh, like undp among other um, uh, international uh, organization coming with their uh, uh big vans so the, the people they uh started um wondering what's happening. And um, they started uh, uh, doing a follow-up uh, where the vehicles are heading to and uh, what they have come uh, to, to bring to the village. So they later came to find that uh, I'm the one who uh, have convinced the institutions coming to the village and uh, uh, the, the the community uh, started chipping in to the organization and uh, continue with the mangrove reforestation. Carrie, did that answer your question? I think in part. I'm just curious, given the enormity of the challenges that you're facing socioeconomically and ecologically in that region. How do you, uh, how do you talk about conservation with your peers and the, the value of this work when also people are really struggling economically to, uh, for their daily bread? or all of the other enormous challenges, how can, how can conservation be a path for people when they're facing these kinds of issues? And how did you see that in yourself? I think that's the question. Yeah. <laughs> the dream come sure. from? Uh, sure. Uh, honestly, at, um, when we speak uh, for the just the, the time of COVID, then every everything went um, uh, stranded, and uh, we were not uh, actively uh, participating on the reforestation. Uh, we were just doing it, but uh, not like um, uh, the way we are used to, and um, we have been uh, uh, um, involving. Uh, the community, uh, more communities, when we have uh, some grants, uh, we just bring, uh, we just uh, mobilize the community who are living adjacent to the mango forest so that they can see the benefit of the mango forest. And uh, they come and uh, participate on the um, uh, awareness. Sometimes we do, we, we have some uh, small funding for community sensitization, and sometimes we have some funding for mangrove reforestation. Uh, so the community, they gain uh, uh, knowledge, 
uh, for the importance of mangroves and uh, they are also um, getting some uh, money to cater for their uh, life uh, for, for their living that's very smart so you if you have it's just very practical actually if you have good donations then you can continue your work and offer more education and more trees are able to to be planted yeah definitely yeah so if every anyone knows more donors then please tell mubarak or us um I know we, we ran a little bit out of time with the Q&A session. Um, I, I still want to, to leave this call open until uh, for us seven o'clock, so for, for another 20 minutes. But if, if you feel uh, that you need to go, I just wanted to tell you that you, you were able to, of course. Um, but you are also welcome to stay for another 20 minutes. Are there still any questions that you would like to ask to Mubarak or Maybe maybe it is time to just say thank you. Thank you for everyone for joining this, this call and thank you Mubarak for your incredible story. Um, I hope you felt uh, that we are all very, very inspired by you and um, yeah, I, I, it's just a great energy and um, you, you should be very proud of, of yourself. Uh, John, yeah. do you have something to share? Well, I just wanted to ask Mubarak one question. Um, what is it that you need the most at this time? Uh, mostly funding. Uh, we are lack of funding. Because at, at the moment we have, um, we have the knowledge on how to do the reforestation. And uh, we can also carry out um, the community sensitization without uh, involving uh, the experts from the government uh, to sensitize the community. So it's uh, the many uh, problem or issue uh, with the work at the moment is just the funding. You can't bring people uh, to the project and uh, leave them just um, going back to their house without anything. They, they might uh, attack you and start beating you. Yeah. What, what mechanisms do you have to receive funds? So do you have a, a nonprofit organization and do you have uh, GoFundMe or some other Patreon or some other kind of thing where people could could support? Yeah, uh, at, at the moment uh, we only have um, the Trillion Tree campaign uh, which is actively uh, supporting uh, the project and uh, we also have uh, banking details for our organization um, whereby we have been receiving some fund, some funds from ecosystem, among other donors, including individuals and foundations. So, um, well, I, I we, see. I see. Sorry? I see that Peter and Jan Hein are on the are on the call. I wonder. Is it possible to create, yes, Peter's saying there, um, is it possible to create a special um, fund specifically for the camp in Kenya, in Mombasa? People can always earmark donations by putting it in a comment that you would like to have it sent to uh, a particular camp. It's always possible. And sometimes we it's, run camp specific campaigns, but we have to spread the love amongst many camps. So. Uh, um, uh, we're about to do a crowdfunder for measurement systems and that will, some of that will go to Mubarak but uh, uh, yeah if you want to donate directly to uh, Mubarak let us know we'll, uh, we'll collect it and send it in one batch to save costs from, from bank charges and the other charges that you always get 
Another good question from Alice is, uh, what is a reasonable amount of money to help? The amount that uh, we are um, currently looking? Yeah, or maybe um, if, if someone, maybe you could explain what, what you could do for, for a smaller donation, um, because I think this is a private donation. Yeah, yeah. We, okay, we can uh, mostly the funding um, uh, will be used to cater for the cost of uh, running the restoration. Like uh, when we uh, uh, we are doing the uh, tree planting, we have to buy some snacks uh, during the plantation because the sun here is too hot and uh, people are getting thirst. And uh, there was a time uh, the Danish guy, his body uh, changed the color and it, it turns to red. And the second day he went to um, uh, farmers to get some uh, uh, medicine. So we have to facilitate the, uh, the participants for uh, uh, tree planting to facilitate to give them some snacks. And um, we also need some uh, tools like spades, ropes, to do the lining, the mangroves, and also paying the community. So um, the, 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 the amount, it will, uh, it will work on the amount of money we have, have been receiving. But um, yes. we are in need of funding to plant the 14 million mangroves. And so far we have planted uh, only 700,000 mangrove ceilings. So we need a lot of funding and uh, we can't make any restriction to any donor that uh, you have to pay this. Uh, and let the donor decide what uh, 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 the foundation uh, they have and they contribute it. Or yes. if the donor asks us to do a breakdown of a, a certain figure that it has been um, suggested by the donor, then we can work on the uh, figure. But any any couple of hundred dollars would would already make a difference for you, right? Yeah, definitely. It, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay, John. Can I? Can I just ask how, how much do you do you give to individuals who join the planting for one day? If a person comes for one day to join the the mangrove planting, how much do they get? Uh, we give them uh, uh, ten US dollar per day, eight hours. Okay. Each and every one, yeah. So, so one hundred dollars would would help. 10 people one day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So that was a good well, last. And uh, maybe I can, uh, I can put one thing uh, clear. Uh, like when uh, we target the season for uh, seeds, uh, we can uh, do a very big um, uh, restoration. Because when uh, you go to the forest, you, uh, people, they have um, uh, capacity of collecting up to 500 uh, or to, uh, in between 500 to 800 seedlings per day and plant it direct. But uh, when we raise the nursery, um, a person per day, he, can, he or she can plant up to 100 um, uh, seedlings. So if we target the uh, direct planting, uh, the seasons and do the direct planting, then we can do much better. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. All right. I think this uh, was a very good topic to end, end up with. So every support is needed. Um, Thank you very much, John, also for your participation and your knowledge. And uh, thanks again, everyone. And thanks again, Mubarak. 
I wish you all a very lovely day and um, hope to see you next time soon. I really appreciate it. Uh, everyone that um, uh, uh, they have participated on this call, I really appreciate their time, their idea, and um, I wish them uh, all the best and much blessing to them and those around them. Thank you. All right, we're waving everyone for a good night or a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you.